Hey kids, what's up? Welcome to the video. Uh, hopefully today I'm going to get some views on this because this is a hot topic right now. Um, we are going to talk about Therese Nielsen and her cancellation and um, just I think I have a pretty good take on it. So the first point I'm going to make is the higher moral high ground someone tries to place themselves on, the more skeletons you will find in their closet. There's this, um, who's, who's the bitch? Um, one of those, one of, one of the SJWs, the, the one who helped her in The Last of Us 2. But she made this take that uh, everything is constantly racist, everything is racist. If you're not seeing racism, you're not looking hard enough. That's not true. But what is true is if someone is constantly trying to place themselves above you and say that they're better than you, that means that inside they know they're not. So whenever you look at Wizards of the Coast, a uh, company who constantly tries to virtue signal, constantly tries to have this holier-than-thou attitude, you, you have to, to kind of look at it and say, huh, I wonder what they're hiding. So uh, there's two things I'm going to talk about today to, to start this off. One, in the 20-some years of Magic the Gathering art, um, and I will, I will give this aside, I do not believe for th there should be any reason this is the case. Like, the black people do just as good art as white people. Like, it's just, it's just a fact. Like, I don't think, unlike some of the other things that get touted around, I don't think you can really argue with that fact. So, and they've hired two black artists in the history of Magic. So that's... That's just astounding. And then you also have, uh, there was, I, I, this story's not been verified, I, I don't know if this is 100% true, but there was uh, this story about a black writer who kept coming in to try to, Wizards of the Coast to try to get a job, and then they kept saying they weren't hiring writers, and they hired like 10 white writers over the period that this guy was there applying. And apparently had like a lot of experience, so... You know, so there, there's that. Wizards of the Coast only cares about women and LGBTQ, but not Therese Nielsen for some reason. Um, part two is Mark Rosewater, the crown prince of virtue signaling, put out, oh lord, okay, so my game capture is above my window capture, so if I do this, oh, I'm smart, there we go. Uh, Mark Rosewater put out this tweet in 2014, or 2013, one of the two, um, and it's this comic right here. Uh, so it's the mother of runes is saying she was always a bit overprotective. You got near fire, for example, and she'd give you protection from red. So I come home from college with my first boyfriend, and she gives me from te protection from black, and I'm like, mom. So for me, personally, I don't care. I'm not a snowflake. I don't look at this and go, rrr, rrr. but this is like... If I were, like, the head design for a company, there's no way in hell this is going on my Twitter. Like, I... This... I really don't think the word racist should be applied to jokes, but this is not in good taste, I will say. That's, that's what I will say about this. It's basically, like, playing on all the different stereotypes. So... I don't, I, I don't appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's the worst kind of racist joke, too, right? Because it's not even really funny. It's just... Just kind of cringy, um, so uh, so so you have that, and then you look at what you look at what we're canceling. Uh, you look at what we're canceling Therese Nielsen for, and it's because uh, the screeching SJWs that form a very small percentage of the magic community, but somehow get to dictate all the decisions. Um, don't like some of the things that she retweeted, and don't like uh, somebody that she apparently sent artwork to. So. Um, one, there are a lot of lunatics on Twitter. Uh, there's people like Ferociously Steph, Autumn Burchett, just like people who are just mentally unbalanced and they're, they're just on Twitter to try to start a riot. Um, but I, I might like, I've, I've retweeted both of those people. You know, I've liked tweets from both of those people. Not because I agree with them, just out of like morbid curiosity, like, what, what is this person doing? You know, and, and like, I'm, I'm kind of trying to bring, bring attention to like, what, like, am I having a stroke? Like, what is going on here? And so I think that could definitely, could definitely be it. Could also just be that, you know, she's, eh, you know, right leaning and Mm, old, you know, it's it's definitely a possibility. I'd prefer for that not to be the case. It's definitely possible it is, but 
what um, the the other thing that people are trying to cancel her for is she sent art to a uh, to some like right wing conspiracy conspiracy theory channel and I will say. Again, I'm not enough of a snowflake that I'd feel like going home and crying about it, but I feel like if you're taking the stance that, like, if you're, if you're here saying, like, that Sandy Hook was, was a, was a hoax, like, that just feels icky, like, I don't want to hear that, like, I don't want to talk about that. I think, un unlike some of the other things, like, you know, faking the moon landing or whatever, you know, there, it's not even worth having a conversation about it's just not like I there's such a small chance that it actually was some kind of a hoax like such a tiny percentage that there's absolutely no point in bringing something like that up and there's a ton of stuff like that on that channel so it's it's not something that I would ever watch it's not something I'd ever subscribe to it's not something that I would ever personally like uh, personally associate myself with, certainly not if I were in the midst of the, like, rabid SJW windstorm that the Magic the Gathering Twitterverse is, but it's, I think there's a good chance that it was just, like, some kind of oversight, you know, if you're, a, if you're an artist like Therese Nielsen, you just get, like, endless fan mail, people saying they like your content, what I'm, what I'm guessing that was is basically, I'm, I'm, I guess the people just, like, hit her up on Twitter, they were like, hey, you know, we really like your art, um, if you want to send us, if you want to send us some stuff for free, we'd be happy to plug you on our show. Nielsen, you know, goes on YouTube, Google, or not Google, goes on YouTube, searches them up, they're like, oh cool, they have X amount of subscribers, and then sends them the art without really thinking much else. That's kind of the best case scenario for that situation. The, the kind of worst case that the what kind of worst case that you're looking at there is, you know, maybe she does actually agree with that stuff, maybe she does subscribe to those conspiracy. Oh, God, you've been just looking at that awful comic for all this time because I forgot to switch back to my arena window. That's smart. Am I going to fix it and re shoot the video? No. But game capture goes well. There we go. Um, but even if it's kind of this worst, worst case scenario where, you know, Nielsen is actually, like, you know, into this kind of unsavory conspiracy theorist stuff at the end of the day who cares like she's an artist and that's kind of where the whole wizards of the coast uh, holier than thou thing kind of ties into all of this i don't need a company who refuses to hire black people telling me that i'm a terrible person because i like an artist who's lower on the victimhood totem pole than a trans person like it's just it's just this ridiculous concept to me that that a company like Wizards of the Coast is is trying to take this stance. I think I, I just wish they'd shut up and try to do a better job with the game. You know, how about instead of having people wasting their time on Twitter, you know, talking about how everything is racist and racist and racism and you know, we need to fix racism by constantly, endlessly, and ineffectively tweeting about it. How about you just work on making it a good game? How about you work on hiring good artists like Therese Nielsen, like, like Seb McKinnon, like Rebecca Gway, instead of these losers who want to draw femboys and women who don't look like women and drab, boring art? Personally, that's what I'd like to see. That's what 99.99% .99 of the magic community wants to see. But unfortunately, Wizards of the Coast just listens to who bullies them the hardest. And right now, that's the SJW community. So honestly, if you want to see change in... If, if you want to see change in how all this works, you just need to bully Wizards more than the SJW community does. That's... um. That's that's kind of what I'll say on it. Anyway,
that has been um, my take on the issue. If, uh, if it was not clear, I absolutely do not think she should have been cancelled. I think that Wizards of the Coast should have put out a simple benign statement. Hello, we are Wizards of the Coast. Obviously, we do not condone the views of all of our artists. We disagree with some of them. We hire them because they make art, not because they're politicians. We're sorry we refuse to hire black people for some reason. In our weekly virtue signaling meeting, will be sure to address the topic. Thank you. Have a good day. And that could be the end of it. <sighs> Thank you. Have a good day.